offense. Now, Christopher has yeah. never been afraid of giving offense. Yes. Um, and uh, what kind of what kind of reason is it not to do something because it might offend someone? It's one of those terrible words, isn't it, that, that uh, we're all supposed to respect is another one. Yes. Um, I mean, uh, one of the things I, I w which would like to say is let's all stop being so damned respectful. Yes. One of the things, one of the problems with, the, with, with our world today is with the way we're expected to be respectful all the time, whether respect is deserved or not. Yes. And we're expected to... Uh, to tiptoe around to avoid giving offence. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't see any reason to, to do that if offence is deserved. Exactly. I, I have a, a absolutely <laughs> perfect report. I have a sort of nightmare image of myself confronting someone with a knife in the street and, and <laughs> <laughs> saying, show me, you know, show me respect. And I'll say, well, look, I tell you what, I'll show you fear. Yes. I, I can do that. Yes. But I can't show you respect. Exactly. I just won't, I won't no. do it. Um, I suppose you will continue to get hate mail. I know Christopher has had the weird experience of having to decide which is weirder, the, the people who are praying for him. Um, not, not necessarily even to get better, but to find faith. Um, in, in his moment of, of, of physical illness, or those who are gloating that he will roast for eternity in hell? I think they're about equal yeah. in, in, in numbers, aren't they? I wonder whether when they say, I'll pray for you, he gives that wonderful reply, I'll think for you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm doing a, a, a sort of doc Well. I find myself in a difficult position because I'm kind of aware in America, and I'm not American, as you can tell, that, um, <laughs> that the, 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 the separation of church and state is, is deeply ingrained in the Amer American politic, and rightly so. And um, John Kennedy, uh, when challenged on his Catholicism, rightly said this is a separate matter, um, and as long as I don't bring my Catholicism into policy, you've nothing to complain about. And this is, this is very, very, very laudable. But going back to the doctor, the hypothetical doctor and the, and the astronomer, if you knew that one of the candidates that you're contemplating voting for believed that in the 19th century, a man called Joseph Smith dug up some golden tablets <laughs> Which he, which he translated and then conveniently lost. <laughs> and translated, moreover, although a 19th century man translated them into 17th century English. <laughs> and lots and lots of other... And more, more importantly, unlike some of the... I mean, we also agree that the biblical stories are equally ridiculous, but the difference is we don't know they were written by known con men, but in fact he was yeah. a yeah. known felon. Yes, um, that, that is true. Um, and, and so if, if the person you're contemplating voting for believes all that, believes that the Garden of Eden was in Missouri, <laughs> believes that Native Americans are the lost ten tribes of Israel, believe that Jesus visited North America. I mean, these beliefs are barking mad. <laughs> they, they, con they, contradict, they, they contradict everything that's known historically, archaeologically. They, they, they contradict science, they contradict history. Now, is it a, a fair defense for such a candidate to say, oh, well, don't worry, I won't let my beliefs interfere with my policies? <laughs> well, maybe he, maybe he won't, but do you want to vote for somebody who's capable of holding in his head such unrealistic nonsense? I mean, do you want a president who, who believes palpably foolish things 
<laughs> e even if he promises that he won't actually let them. Um, it's just it, back to the problem of the doctor and the and the astronomer again. I preceded a, a question to you and, and said, um, atheists like Adolf Hitler, Richard Dawkins, and Joseph Stalin, dot, 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 would you take umbrage? I would take umbrage, but I would defend your right to say yes, it. Yes, but I know, but, but what I wanted to point out is that most of your writings, in most of your writings, when you talk about religious people, you, you, you pluck out figures like um, the pilots who um, uh, drove the airplanes into the um, Empire State uh, Building. Okay. You, um, you pluck out people like the inquisitors of the Grand Inquisition, um, people like Jerry Fowell, and you must accept that for, for those of us who are of uh, people of faith, to take these extremes, these horrible, horrible extremes, um, sinners in all our eyes now, um, as representative of our faith, is as, is as offensive I, as you being lumped with um, Adolf and Joseph. The difference between taking somebody like Hitler and taking somebody like the pilots who flew into the World Trade Center is, or Stalin. Stalin may have been an atheist, he was an atheist, but Stalin did not do his terrible deeds in the name of atheism. The people who flew planes into the World Trade Center precisely did their terrible deeds in the name of religion. They were righteous people. They believed they were doing right. Okay. They believed they were doing the will of Allah. Right. The Ben Affleck, uh, whom I didn't know, but I understand he's Batman, um, uh, was on Bill Maher's show with Sam Harris, and he vigorously and rather vitriolically attacked Sam, accusing him of racism because Sam has criticized Islam. And that's a very easy thing to do, but it's a very silly, superficial thing to do because, of course, Islam is not a race. Uh, and it's, it is an enormously widespread misconception that anybody who criticizes Islam is being religious. Um, I would say that if you can convert to it or apostatize out of it, then it's not a race. Okay? <laughs> so, it's nonsense to, to criticize uh, people like Sam Harris and indeed me um, who, who, who go after the extremes that Islam can, can, can deliver uh, as, as, as racism. And um, I thought it was a rather disgraceful exhibition of bigotry on Ben Affleck's part. And there's a kind of condescension about it, actually, as well, because the horrific things that are done in the Islamic world, not of course by all Muslims, very far from it, but the horrific things that are done to gay people, to women, stoning women to death for the crime of being raped, throwing acid in their face for the crime of refusing to marry a cousin, refusing to let them drive cars, refusing to let them leave the house with, unless in the company of a male relative. These horrific things, misogynistic things, are, um, it's almost as though one's saying, uh, we, you, you, you brown people, we don't hold you to the same standards of uh, non-misogyny as we hold ourselves. Now, isn't that a patronizing and condescending thing to do, to use a different standard, to say, um, we don't, um, we don't criticize you because, you're, because misogyny is part of your culture. And that, I think, is what uh, Ben Affleck was doing, among, among other things. It was, a, it was a disagreeable episode. I thought Sam handled it um, very well. I think it was quite unexpected. I don't think that Ben Affleck had actually read anything that Sam had written. I think he probably had been briefed by somebody who said, Sam Harris is a racist Islamophobe, go after him. That, that would be what I suspect. For Professor Dawkins, considering that uh, atheism cannot possibly have any sense of absolute morality, would it not then be an irrational leap of faith, which atheists themselves so harshly condemn, for an atheist to decide between right and wrong? Absolute morality 
the, the absolute morality that a religious person might profess would include what? Stoning people for adultery? <laughs> death for apostasy? Uh, punishment for breaking the Sabbath? These are all things which are religiously based absolute moralities. I don't think I want an absolute morality. I think I want a morality that, that is thought out, reasoned, argued, discussed, and... <laughs> based upon, I could almost say, intelligent design. <laughs> um, <laughs> can we not design our society which has the sort of morality, the sort of society that, that we want to live in? If you actually look at the, the moralities that are accepted among modern people, among 21st century people, we don't believe in slavery anymore, we believe in equality of women, um, we believe in, in being gentle, we believe in being kind to animals. These are all things which are entirely recent. They have very little basis in biblical or Quranic scripture. They are, th they are things that have developed over historical time through a consensus of reasoning, sober discussion, argument, legal theory, political and moral philosophy. These do not come from religion. To the extent that you can find the good bits in religious scriptures, you have to cherry pick. You, you search your way through the Bible or the Quran and you find the occasional verse that is a, an acceptable profession of morality. And you say, look at that, that's religion. And you leave out all the horrible bits. <laughs> and you say, oh, we don't believe that anymore. We've grown out of that. Well, of course we've grown out of it. We've grown out of it because of secular moral philosophy and rational discussion. There are, there are great truths in the Greek fables, aren't there, of, of mythology. It doesn't need to be true for us to derive um, truth from it. The world is full of origin myths and creation myths and myths of all kinds, and many of them are very beautiful. But what worries me about the Bible is that it has acquired, in our civilization, an enormous privileged position. I mean, everybody knows something about the Greek myths and the and the Valhalla myths and so on, and some other myths as well. Mm. And they are interesting, and they're treated as interesting myths. But the Bible myths are given a special privileged treatment. I mean, they are, uh, they're regarded as somehow set off on one side, away from all these other myths. No doubt you'll find truths in the other myths. You'll find some truths of that kind in yes, Australian but, Aboriginal myths. Yes, although I'm looking for God. Well, which God? I mean, why not Jupiter? Why not Zeus? Why not, why not Thor? Yes, I Personal opinions are of less interest than um, uh, evidence-based views. And it is not that difficult to find evidence. There's plenty of, we have very, very good scientific methods for discovering what's true about certain things. For example, in the case of Holocaust denial, as somebody said, the problem with that is that it's a lie. Um, and the, creationism, the, similarly, the, is, the, that, yes. is that a lie? Yes. Um, the Holocaust did happen. Evolution did happen. The evidence for both is absolutely overwhelming. A quote from Kurt Wise, who is an American geologist. He studied geology at Harvard, no less, under Stephen Jay Gould, no less. And he was set for a, a good career as an academic geologist, which all his life he had desperately wanted. The problem was, it came from within, it was his religious upbringing, his firewall of faith. And he couldn't reconcile the two, his scientific education with his religion. And he literally got a pair of scissors and went right through the Bible and cut out every verse that would have to go if he accepted his scientific education. And it, in the end, he decided there was nothing left of his Bible. He therefore tossed out science and said, and from then on, he said, um, with that in great sorrow, I tossed into the fire all my dreams and hopes in science. And he goes on, I am a young age creationist because that is my understanding of the scripture. As I shared with my professors years ago when I was in college, if all the evidence in the universe turns against creationism, I would be the first to admit it, but I would still be a creationist because that is what the word of God seems to indicate. Here I must stand. If religion can do that to a highly educated Harvard geologist, 
Just think what it can do to an average school child or student. Thank you. People believe in God because it provides them with a sense of hope. And without God, where would that sense of hope derive from? Okay, um, first thing to say about that is that the universe does not owe you a sense of hope. It could be that the world, the universe, is a totally hopeless place. I don't, as a matter of fact, think it is. But even if it were, that would not be a good reason for believing in God. You cannot say, I believe in X, whatever X is, God or anything else, because that gives me hope. You have to say, I believe in X because there is some evidence for X. In the case of God, there is not a tiny shred of evidence for the existence of any kind of God. But you, you see enough, you see enough, but you, do you see enough, as, 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 as reading your books, I mean, there is, there is something to be said for what you say about, you see enough in the beauty, for example, the, the scientific beauty of a rainbow to, to inspire you. That's the second point I was coming on to, is that there's plenty of reason for hope in a godless world. The, the universe is a beautiful place, the world is a, is a beautiful place. To understand it in a clear-eyed, open-eyed way, to look out at the world and to, and to really understand why we exist, what it's all about, that is a hugely uplifting feeling. That really does give a sense of worth to life, even if life itself is finite, as I believe it is. Uh, nevertheless, um, it is not a hopeless life with, without a God. And to revert to my earlier point, even if it were, then it's just l illogical to say that, that's a, that that gives you evidence for the Richard, belief in God. Here endeth the lesson. Thank you. Thank you. Listen to, to Brandon here explaining uh, what's for him the beauty of religion, the beauty of believing. Isn't this a, a profound need we have, uh, like a genetic need? I think we there, may be, there may well be a profound need to understand. And the satisfaction that you get from genuine understanding, which comes from science, is so much, so much greater. I mean, there is far more beauty in the real understanding of the reality of nature than there is in reading some ancient book, or than reading some modern book, which is what the Book of Mormon is. And I have to say that when I read the Book of Mormon recently, I didn't read it all, what impressed me was that it's an obvious fake. I mean, this is a 19th century book written in 16th century English, and it came to pass, verily I say unto you, and things like that. That's not the way people talked in the 19th century. It's a fake. So it's not beautiful. It's a work of charlatanry. As, uh, oh, do I... Uh, you have, uh, you, you, you're free to answer. The book's been studied and, and, and torn apart and, and looked at and I am not. I'm not one of the one of the professors of that, course, is, that, have, that have done it. Yeah. But do you do you believe? If you to call this man a charlatan, it, I do. I do. I take offense to it. And but he was a convicted charlatan. No, he was a convicted no, con man. No, th these are all falses. You should do your do your research. Well, and, I, yeah. I think I have. Yeah, yeah. you have. But no, we don't. Almost read the book. Obviously, yeah. different information. Yeah. But isn't these texts, whether it's the Book of Mormons or is the Bible or is the Koran, isn't Mormons, or is the Bible, or is the Koran, isn't Aren't these texts about something else than, than true stories? It's, it's, it's about values. It can be, for many, yeah. anyway. Um, the Bible and the Koran are both genuinely ancient books, um, so they're not obvious fakes in the, in the way the Book of Mormon is. And they do contain uh, great poetry, uh, and these are ancient myths which are of great interest to mythologists, to anthropologists, great mythologists, to anthropologists. They're not actually more interesting than the myths you get from other parts of the world which are also very interesting. Uh, before we continue, uh, actually I have to throw you out. I don't mean to interrupt the debate. Uh, it could be a wonderful debate with you about m the Book of Mormon the whole night. Yeah. But you're going to play for us in a short while. Yes. So while I finish up with uh, Mr. Dawkins here, uh, the band would like you to come and get ready for, with them. Okay. All right.
Is that okay? Yeah. Good. I'm so if sorry. I, could have I didn't know you minutes. had to leave. Yes, <laughs> I know. And it's actually uh, something uh, you like to discuss, but uh, anyway. Maybe we could talk on the phone later. Yeah, you're so welcome sorry. back any time to, to discuss I'll give you more. Some, some of the true history of I the church. I didn't realize you had to leave. That's, that's okay. okay. No, so that's why I'm... Uh... Just one more question for me, really, uh, before we open it up to questions from the audience. What laws would you like to see uh, introduced uh, if you could rule the world, and particularly in regard to religious freedom? Well, when you said earlier that I, that I was passionately against religious education, that's actually not quite true. I mean, I... In I, schools, I should say. Yes, but no, I'm, I'm actually in favour of religious education in schools, uh, but that's very different from religious indoctrination. Right. So um, I think that it is... I mean, when we found that result, that, that only 39% of so-called Christians in the country can identify Matthew as the first book of the, of the New Testament, um, I actually was rather shocked at that because it seems to me to be it's part of our culture, uh, it's part of, of any person's education in this country, um, that they should know something about the Bible. Um, you cannot appreciate European history unless you understand about Christianity and the Crusades and, and uh, battles between Protestants and Catholics and things like that. Uh, you can't appreciate English literature Unless you, unless you can take your allusions to biblical references, because there's so much of the Bible in literature. I mean, the, the, the Bible vies with Shakespeare as, as a sort of origin of common phrases that we all use and don't realize where they come from. And, and because like Shakespeare, from roughly the same period, um, the King James Bible is actually rather beautifully written. So in, in a world ruled by Richard Dawkins, everyone would know the Bible, they would know, understand the history of religions well, as a, a sort of anthropological, cultural... Uh, anthropological, aspect. cultural, uh, historical, yeah. liter literary. Um, but that, of course, is p pulled apart from indoctrination, yeah. where a child is told, you're in a Catholic school, you are a Catholic child, you believe this nonsense here. I mean, that's what you'd like to change, presumably. I, An end of, to I, would, like to ch I would like to abolish faith schools in the sense of schools that are run by particular churches, particular denominations, mm -hmm. which indoctrinate children uh, in a particular religion, which are, are remarkably effective. I mean, the, the, the reason why there's so much bloodshed and violence in the Middle East is precisely because young, ch young children have been indoctrinated from the cradle upwards. And they've been sent to madrasas, they've been taught the nonsense. And they've been, they've been told this is, this is holy writ. They've been told um, that you've got to believe this. And people really do believe it. As Sam Harris said, the thing to, to understand when you're talking about people like um, um, suicide bombers, these people really believe what they say they believe. And the reason they really believe what they say they believe is that they were told it as children at a vulnerable age. Uh, and it, the, the evidence that they do really believe, it seems to me undeniable. The other big thing I have about children, and I've become almost a bore about this, is uh, labeling of children. It's, a, it's another aspect of the same thing, but um, in, indoctrination goes with the tying a label around a child and saying, this is a Catholic child, this is a Protestant child, this is a Muslim child. And what really pisses me off about this is that it isn't only done by the religious. We all do it. It's part of our culture to label a child. We see in the newspapers in Northern Ireland, Catholic children on their way to school being stoned by Protestants, or Protestant children on their way to school being stoned. Mm -hmm. um, the newspapers, which are not run by, they're not, it's not religious propaganda, it's simply accepted that there is such a thing as a Catholic child. No, there isn't. There's a child of Catholic parents. Don't ever talk about a Catholic child, a Protestant child, a Muslim child. You do not believe in the existence of God, but you believe in aliens. But the very existence of your animosity, hatred and mockery towards him proves your hypocrisy. I suggest that you find the longest crowbar you can find to pull your head out of your behind. Push it, dog -like. I read your book about the Bible. It is totally sucks ass <laughs> and is biased and one-sided propaganda. Your theory sucks. You are not as wise as you think you are. You hypocrites want to condemn anybody for making mistakes. 
or believing different from your bullshit, retard, atheism, dogma. <laughs> Dawkins' books are fucking stupid bullshit. Now, Christopher has yeah. never been afraid of giving offence. Yes. Um, and uh, what kind of... What kind of reason is it not to do something because it might offend someone? It's one of those terrible words, isn't it, that, that uh, we're all supposed to respect is another one. Yes. Um, I mean, uh, one of the things I, I w which would like to say is let's all stop being so damned respectful. Yes. One of the things, one of the problems with, the, with, with our world today is with the way we're expected to be respectful all the time, whether respect is deserved or not. Yes. And we're expected to... Uh, to tiptoe around to avoid giving offence. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't see any reason to, to do that. Of, of, of physical illness? Or those who are gloating that he will roast for eternity in hell? I think they're about equal yeah. in, in, in numbers, aren't they? I wonder whether when they say, I'll pray for you, he gives that wonderful reply, I'll think for you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a, a, a sort of job. Well, I find myself in a difficult position because I'm kind of aware in America, and I'm not American as you can tell, that, um, <laughs> that the, 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 the separation of church and state is, is deeply ingrained in the Amer American politic, and rightly so. And um, John Kennedy... Uh, when challenged on his Catholicism, rightly said, "This is a if offence is deserved." Exactly. I, I have a, a absolutely <laughs> perfect. I have a sort of nightmare image of myself confronting someone with a knife in the street and, and <laughs> saying, "Show me, you know, show me respect." And I'll say, "Well, look, I tell you what, I'll show you fear." Yes, I, I can do that, yes. but I can't show you respect. Exactly. I just won't, I won't um, do it. Um, I suppose you will continue to get hate mail. I know Christopher has had the weird experience of having to decide which is weirder, the, the people who are praying for him. Um, not, not necessarily even to get better, but to find faith um, in, in his moment. Separate matter. Um, and as long as I don't bring my Catholicism into policy, you've nothing to complain about. And this is, this is very, very, very laudable. But going back to the doctor, the hypothetical doctor and the, and the astronomer, if you knew that one of the candidates that you're contemplating voting for believed that in the 19th century, a man called Joseph Smith dug up some golden tablets <laughs> Which he, which he translated and then conveniently lost. <laughs> and translated, moreover, although a 19th century man translated them into 17th century English. <laughs> and lots and lots of other... And more, more importantly, unlike some of the... I mean, we also agree that the biblical stories are equally ridiculous, but the difference is we don't know they were written by known con men, but in fact he was yeah. a yeah. known felon. Yes, um, that, that is true. Um, and, and so if, if the person you're contemplating voting for believes all that, believes that the Garden of Eden was in Missouri,